Hi, my name is Bob Grinier and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. So we are looking at the Vega Copper Pipe Ball Lightning Cut. And so this is this section of copper pipe where we have a multi-aspect spherical or uh, hemispherical cut out of it. Now this is interesting, we are at the top side of this um, structure, so I'll look here, we are kind of like, we're looking at this kind of area here, and it's starting to look a bit like inside of the Vega Valley, and, but this is mostly copper oxide, I should imagine. You know, you could be forgiven for thinking you were looking at some of the uh, structures on the Vega Valley. But this isn't the thing. Yeah. yeah, it's definitely looking like that. It's a bit of that vibe about it, isn't it? Well, how about that? Look at these crystal grains around here. Where have we seen something like that? <laughs> Where have we seen something like that before? I think we've seen something like that with iron. That's so I think we are going to see that this is iron. Which is not surprising because iron was right next to it, but anyway. Um, it's quite striking the way it just comes up to this boundary and then it changes <laughs> there's a boundary which is very very distinct and it's almost like this is scalloped out here look at this <gasps> you can only see it when that better resolution comes in something very clearly has gone on here what went on so yeah if i was to hazard a guess i would say that was iron and oxygen there and it's blending smoothly in from the copper but there is this structure here, which is about that wide, and it has this diameter here, and then it has a boundary. <laughs> so we're going to have, a, I think I'll really have a closer look into this kind of area here, rather fine. It seems to be distorted, like maybe it, it hit here with more of its diameter, and it just touched a little bit over this side. But this is where it looks most interesting because it has this, this defined boundary. And I don't actually record this position here. Really. And we are going to go and look at this. So the overall structure here is across there. So sort of 65 white pond. Okay, so we're getting some illumination over here, so this might be okay for us. Okay. 
think I'm going to go and look at this section over here. It's very defined, isn't it? Comes up to there, and there is an abrupt barrier. See if you can get a better imaging by lowering the beam energy a little. So this is really falling away and there's a big hole in the middle. This is interesting, look. This is looking like it's twisting coming out. Twisting, 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 twisting. This looks like the same kind of feature that we have on ultrasonically treated aluminium, which is bizarre. Let me measure this diameter here. And there we go. It's the one micron. This is incredible because this is exactly what Anatoly Klimov said was in these hollow spheres. But of course, here we're seeing something that looks much more like a toroid. Okay. I'm going to have a look up here a little bit closer on this so we can get a better shot of this. Um, Brightness, we're going to be able to get that in a better focus. I don't know, but let's just see. I'm going to do less than but better something. Okay, I really do think that that is kind of twisting, it's not so clear. <sighs> but it's just this ridiculous boundary when it comes to here and it just stopped. Let's see what this material is, but I suspect it's iron, but maybe it isn't.
Okay, we're going to have a look at what the elements are here. And over here, and whatever. What is on that edge? It is iron. Maybe there's cobalt in there, and it's coming from the iron. What is on the list up here? What? Well, isn't that a thing? What's this? No. And what do we have in the center? If it's going to give us any samples there. We shall see. So the first one was got some iron. The outside of that is perfectly iron. <laughs> and this one has a lot of elements. Cesium? No, come on. Oh my god, it really has a peak for cesium. Come on. Might be something else. Really? Cesium? Tellurium? Iodine? Iodine? Oh my my. It looks like it's got some cesium. How? Well, well, well. A very deep place. Um, of course it's in the centre, so it's mostly carbon. <laughs> right. Um, that's interesting. Let's do a few more samples in there. Oops, I didn't want to do that one. I'll do it anyway. Um, so what is that one? Cesium. I think a line sample is in order. Let's see what the parameters for that is. Line resolution. Let's have a few more there. Oh, well, well, well. I'll have a closer look at that and find out what we get in there, but it's easy. Okay, let's have a line. I think we'll go along, along one of these iron or whatever they are. That's the boundary. And all the way into the centre. And across the other side. Why not? Is that going to be possible? Let's do all that and see what we see there. Interesting. Well, look at where the sodium and potassium is. Huh. Maybe have to do a map of it. <laughs> Maybe have to do a map. Of course, we may not be able to see some things because they're in shadow. So copper and zinc plays a big role here. 
in this line scan. So, as we come along and from the outside, it is oxygen and iron. And then as we come across the border here, it goes to almost entirely copper. And we've got like, uh, where is it here? In the central area, it's 71% copper, 78% copper. Of course, things are jumping around at the moment, but anyway. And what else? Um, no iron, no potassium, no silicon, no sodium. So it's just copper and oxygen. A little bit of carbon. Come across that to the inner, inner surface here. And you've got a little pulse of iron. And then it drops down, and in the center there we have, what do we have most of? Some zinc. And in the center area, here we have a lot of zinc. 81% zinc in the center there. And oxygen, and so on. So the whole center, that part of the center is a lot of zinc. And then we have this dead center. What do we have? A lot of carbon in the dead center. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, yeah, the highest by far concentration of carbon at 71.5% is in the absolute dead center. And what else do we have around that zone? The zinc drops, everything drops. Okay, and then we come across up to the other side. The copper starts going up. I think it starts falling. And then we come across the other side of the torus. And we start to see more copper. It's a little bit messier. And then when we come over the other side to outside of the torus, we have at this point here, wow, 91.7% iron. And at this point we have 96.2% iron. So, I believe that this EVO structure was born out of, uh, how should we put this, copper and zinc. Well, actually, <laughs> copper, actually. <clears throat> this is an EVO born out of eating copper, and it's carrying that material around, and it's also in the center of the vortex, got some zinc that it's captured. Amazing. And right in the center, of course, as ever, we have a high concentration of carbon. Pull that down there, move that over there, and get a better idea. How striking is that? It might be that other side's in shadow, so I think we need to do a map on this now. What are the map specifics? Four minutes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eight minutes. Not a lot is changing in there, so we might stop that. I think we've got our answer there. Now, the question is, did it pull all these iron atoms in because of the intense magnetism of this? I think we need to do some quick samples over there, actually. I'm going to do that whilst I'm on this view. Is this copper and zinc over there? This looks a bit vague value-ish, so it might well be. in Vega Valley, sodium is synthesized from the grass. We're seeing a lot of sodium here, wow. 
time. Another one right at the tip where it's a bit brighter. Yep, same story. Zinc cut the tip. <sighs> so the question is, was all this iron built up on this copper and zinc and sodium because of this Evo, or was the iron there whatever, and this came in and ate into it a bit? Interesting. So we're going to do a map of this and that will take some time. So I'm going to go back and change the parameters to map, which increases the intensity of the electrons. So it's like super duper strong. Take an image of that just so that we have it for reference. Dialing up the aluminium and silicon imagery so we can see where they sit. Obviously, the copper is the inside surface of the Evo, but actually, the striking thing is is that the iron is the boundary there. And we're gonna, I think, I'll do another map closer up. But you can see it's right up to the boundary, including the boundary up here. So we'll have a look at this with a closer up map. And then the copper is inside this. The aluminium is only on the iron. And of course we know that iron can be fused of two aluminiums. And there's no aluminium in this system. So the aluminium here could actually be fissioning of the iron. And look at where the silicon is as well. It's essentially only on the iron. And what do we know is that... Um, there are paths from silicon to iron as well by way of uh, carbon or whatever, oxygen. Huh. It's incredible. Look at the 
detail. Again, the the potassium does seem to be pretty much everywhere, that's interesting. The zinc is only outside of the iron <laughs> and the torus of the copper. <laughs> Not a field structure at all. Oh, look at that. We almost looks like we've got a bit of a hexagon going on there. Yeah, so there's, there's very strong separation between the iron, the copper, the zinc. So the zinc is all the way on the outside and in the center here. Um, interestingly, on this level of quantization, it's not seeing any carbon uh, because it's just totally blown out by everything else. Well, that certainly tells a story, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm, I'm amazed at about, about the level, the fact that this skin on this Evo is straight up. Um, iron. Interestingly, there's iron on this end here, look. wonder if there's iron on the end of this one. Maybe there is. But I'm going to go and do a zoom up on this section here. <clears throat> uh, because I think that's going to tell us something. So this is the area. Let's go back and just check. So I guess from <clears throat> we can maybe work out the radii here to actually work out what the radius of this torus is. Um, I don't, I, I think it crashed into the surface, maybe carrying all of these iron nuclei around it, maybe, possibly. It does seem to have this hexagon kind of boundary. So the overall cross there is 72 microns. To. Anyway, we're going to look inside this area here. Yeah. It definitely looks like that's twisting coming out of there, I'm pretty sure. I'm going to take a shot of that just once we're here. Fortunately, we've got a little bit of wobble there. It's not going to be very clean. But these twisting structures are extremely similar to those that we witnessed in the ultra experiment at the tips of the <coughs> um, cracks and even in the middle of material. Yeah, it looks the same kind of structure. And it's even the same kind of scales from my memory. What a complete honor to be doing this.
<laughs> wow, wow. It's just a skin. It just comes down here and it's orthogonal. It's literally orthogonal to the skin. I mean, actually, to be fair, uh, it's orthogonal here, but it's going off at an angle here. So it implies that when this copper, as we know it to be, so let's pull that up. Where's the copper? copper, copper, copper. As the copper Evo slammed into this, possibly this iron structure, uh, the iron just got instantaneously swept around its outside. So maybe this is the actual structure itself and the iron is this skin. But it's only because it took whatever the state of the iron was here, unless it's transporting the whole lot. But I suspect because this is not, I mean, it might have influenced it as it froze, but uh, I don't know, it's just a lot we can learn from this, isn't it? But where the oxygen is as well, it's just not on the copper. And the zinc is in the center. This might be zinc deposited later, but this is definitely there. Potassium. Uh, no, look, look at the silicon and the aluminium. I'm going to make one of those green actually. You've got green, you've got oxygen is green. Uh, what haven't you got? Maybe I can make it dark a bit. Change colour. Uh, 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 purple. Iron's purple, so it's not so good. Change colour. What's what isn't coincident? Um copper's yellow. Lots that direction. Silicon so hmm. quite white. So let's look where that silicon is. Look at look at that silicon. <gasps> the silicon and aluminium are co-located. Potassium is basically everywhere. And the iron. Look at the iron compared to the silicon. The silicon is in between the iron. And where's the aluminium? The aluminium is in between the iron. The silicon appears to be in the center with the aluminium slightly on the outside so this is stunning just stunning interestingly it's just there's no carbon here <laughs> maybe one more in the center showing the carbon i think we're done pretty much here yeah, it's stopped look at that That is the iron. Turn the iron on. Aluminium in the middle. Silicon in the middle. So those two. Interestingly, look, the, it doesn't appear that the silicon and the aluminium, maybe, maybe, maybe it's this area there. Let's see. Let's see. No, it's not. The silicon and the aluminium don't form part of the skin. And of course, silicon and aluminium are not ferromagnetic. But look where the iron is. The iron actually forms the skin. Silicon, aluminium are not the skin. Look at the silicon again. Go back, show the iron. They're not the skin. I think this is a real finding here.
Yeah. It's definitely on the outside. Copper is... Copper is just totally on the inside. <laughs> Oxygen's everywhere there. So, but no carbon. Have I, have I excluded carbon? Why am I seeing no carbon? There's no excluded carbon. Amazing. So, let's do one more sample in the middle area. This middle, middle, middle area. Let's go back to this and have a look at what we saw on here. Uh, what, what, what. Um, we are going to, well, okay, we're not going to see any illumination there. Hmm. I don't think there's a lot of point doing that. It's all in shadow. Darn it. Darn it. Maybe we can have a look here. Here? No, here I think. We don't need it that big, it's only that small bit there. Going across. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's a little take. This little chunk here. Yeah. 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 And it is towards the center. Yeah, so this is all carbon in the center of the black stuff, essentially. You just can't see it because it's in shadow. Ah, oh, what a wonderful thing. Zinc, where there's no carbon. Potassium. No, that's the copper. The copper's on the edge. But I think we can safely conclude that, that this was a copper toroid. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Even here, the they've got iron on the outer skin, so they've got copper with a bit of iron just on that ridge. I'll get rid of that. Uh, here we go, just on the outer ridge. So you've got copper, and then right just outside that, you've got iron. Now, is that iron that it caught from the other side and swept around? Maybe. Well, that was satisfying. Um, <laughs> I think that's all we can get from that, really. Um, let's go back here. Now, are the substructures around here? One substructure here, one substructure here, one substructure here. How many of them are there? I don't know. Is that another one? Don't know.
I'm going to take a shot there whilst I am in a position to. Look at this little puppy. So this is, um, if I show you here, it's on the part of the section that was cut out by ball lightning, but this is a separate event that occurred on the surface. Um, so what we're looking at here is, this is copper and oxygen, basically. This has got some zinc in it. Um, but this, if you look, probably here is the easiest way to do it. It is, uh, this is a large torus that's come in and it's crashed on the surface. I don't know whether it was carrying all of this iron with it. It may have been. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, if you look at the structure here, these are, are twisted coming out. Okay. Yeah? And um, it has a distinct skin. And if you go into the EDS, this is on one side. And the actual thickness here, which if you go back here, um, can I measure on here? No, I can't measure. You can. Yeah, I can. How do I do that? Okay. It's okay. I'll do it on the main screen here. No. Yeah, that's uh, a label and, and... Yeah, it's okay. I, ju I just need to give you an indicative measurement. Yeah, okay. um, so this is, the, the skin is about a micron. Uh -huh. and. I sat next to Anatoly Klimov, principal researcher at uh, the um, All Russian uh, Plasma Physics Institute. And he says he gets these hollow balls. This is a torus, the two types, the torus and the ball. He gets these hollow balls in his experiments, and they're, they're, the, the skin is about a micron. <laughs> but, so, but when you look at this under the analysis here, it has the micron thick skin is copper. So it's grabbed the copper as part of the exotic vacuum object. Uh, it's hollow inside. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then right on the, just on the outside, is a thin skin of iron. Mm -hmm. Just on the outside. Uh, it has zinc in the middle. <laughs> and uh, uh, carbon only in the middle. So if we go to the um, previous shot here. And go to that one's map. The iron comes up to here and it's suddenly around the skin. This, this okay. you've got to imagine this is like a donut. Okay. And the donut has come into the surface. The donut's made of copper. Okay. Now I don't know whether it carried yeah. the, all of the yeah. iron with it, or when it came into this surface, it had some iron there and it crashed in and it immediately Covered. skinned the outside of it. Okay. Which is just pretty amazing. <laughs> Yeah, because like the difference in melting point between copper and iron, and the fact yeah. that it can freeze like this, you know, copper's like one thousand and fifty-nine degrees C, iron's like maybe you get some iron that would melt at forty. But look at this: in between these iron strands, which are iron oxide, okay, in between you have silicon and aluminium. And in fact, it's only in between. Mm -hmm. And so you have a wave function thing going on. Okay. And if you fuse two aluminiums, you get iron 54. If you fuse two silicons, you kind of don't get iron 56 <laughs> or whatever it is because you've got too many of the wrong nucleons. But if you take like oxygen and, and silicon, that mm -hmm. goes to uh, 28 plus 16 is is the is it calcium? That's calcium forty two, is it? And then you add another oxygen. I don't know, but you get to iron by the things that are there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it, it is a wave so function, and and sometimes yeah. it's oxygen and iron, sometimes it's silicon and iron, sometimes it's aluminium and iron. Okay. But so also, it's, it's like an oscillation. It's a, yeah, and I've seen this before on a Hutchison sample where there was one of these black holes. Mm -hmm. It's like a, a, a void, which is a conical yeah. section going down. Yeah, yeah. And on one side, it had this shelf, and the shelf was like diamond, and then it, it had um, spots of like elements, and then some, some of them were coincident, 
with silicon, some were convinced of them with magnesium, some of them convinced, uh, 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 but they were repeating patterns across the shelf. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so you can imagine that you have these coherent waves of iron, coherent wave of aluminium, coherent wave of silicon, coherent wave of oxygen, and where they meet, you get one element synthesized iron, where they don't meet, you get like calcium, in, so it depends on the system. Mm -hmm. When, when it settles down, it, it's, it's like everything's playing, it's like a big, big song, and when it stops, you, it's you, you get this on the individual. It, no, it just instantaneously freezes, and all of the nucleons that are at this point form these elements. Mm -hmm. It's very weird to think about, but that's what the evidence shows, <laughs> in, in my view. Um, so this is really special. On here, we saw... Um, uh, all of these different uh, different toroids. So this one's got six, this one's got eight. Uh, we saw b many others with three and four, like literally a square. <laughs> Here's a six-sided one. And of course, then you, you have the, in these cases, you get the carbon around the outside, but this is mostly copper because it's, these are just ones that are consuming the surface. And yeah, anyway, so. Mm -hmm. Very, very, very satisfying, and, and, and the, these structures, you can see them, the, 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 the little balls eating into the surface with its classic scalloping. Okay, so I, I think probably what I'll do is I'll just, if you give me a few minutes, I'll, I'll set up a map on one area of this, because what I did was I sent out the map with the, the, pre, with the viewing software, yeah. and I just l allow people to download it, and at least one guy, a guy called Artifact, he spent his lunch breaks uh, over the last week and a half finding really interesting stuff on the Vega Valley. Uh -huh. So, uh, and also, you know, sh things that show all the, how things are building and, and so on. So it's, it was really cool. So I'm gonna, I wanna do that again. So if you can give me, I'm just gonna save yeah, this yeah, yeah, yeah. and we'll make it, we'll make a map. Yeah. So thank you very much. That was a look at around and around uh, the cut where a large 10 millimeter ball lightning had cut into a copper tube in the Vega experiment for Henk urine. Thank you very much Henk for supplying this sample and for doing the work. Uh, we're really starting to understand what is going on.